Welcome to the ninth installment of Project Adopt Live's Home Chat series, brought to you by Hope for Animals in collaboration with some of our wonderful media and arts friends, including, of course, myself. A very good afternoon to all of you who are watching right now. My name, of course, is Wayne Chan, and it's my pleasure to be with you on this beautiful Sunday afternoon. Now, you're probably watching us from the safety and comfort of your homes right now. But please, 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 please don't forget, there are many wonderful deserving animals out there who have yet to find homes of their own. And dozens of tireless, dedicated individuals and volunteers caring for these animals in shelters and foster homes all over the country. Now, these animals and their caregivers are in urgent need right now of your help especially now when fundraising events and adoption drives have been suspended. Many are facing significant financial difficulties, struggling with the cost of rent and providing for the daily needs of the animals in their care, such as food, medication, health supplements and toys. Now we at Hope for Animals are stepping up to raise funds for our animal welfare group partners and we'd like to thank right now some of our wonderful generous sponsors for their invaluable efforts towards these wonderful animals. Now, first up, we want to thank our campaign sponsor, Pet Lovers Center, who has kindly pledged $5,000 worth of pet food to help our animal welfare group partners care for their charges as a part of the adoption starter kit for any animal that's adopted through Project Adopt Live. Pet Lover Center, in case you don't know, has the widest range and the freshest stock of products for pet owners to pamper their beloved companions. They also provide essential services such as pet grooming and vet consultation. You can visit one of their 70 stores island-wide or check out their online store right now. Our other campaign sponsor is none other than the Pets Couture. Now, they have pledged to donate 20% of the proceeds from six selected pet collar designs in their dapper collection to Project Adopt Live. Now you can check out these wonderful unique collars on their Facebook Live videos running on Saturdays at 2 p.m. Pets Couture has been crafting original designs all the way since 2010. Happy pets, happy life! Our next sponsor that I want to tell you about is Lid Sketch. Now Lid Sketch will be creating beautiful portraits of your pets at the very, very reasonable price of just $25 for postcards and $20 as well as $30 for head of full body digital renderings. Wow. Now, a portion of these proceeds will be donated to Project Adopt Live, and this will support our affiliated animal welfare groups and shelters. Now, if you are interested, please scan the QR code below for purchase. You should see the QR code on screen. Do scan it right now if you can. Now, we also have Magic Dow Photography. They are running this amazing deal of just $25 to convert your pet's photo into a lovely watercolor print, of which $15 goes to Project Adopt Live. Now, if you purchase, you also stand to win a pet photo shoot. How cute is that? It's worth $300, not bad. So do check out Magic Dow's Instagram to see examples of their beautiful work and please scan the QR code again below on the screen if you'd like to get one or even more of these amazing pieces for yourself. Now, our very own Hope for Animals artist team is right now offering a range of beautiful art ornaments which you can have personalized with a hand-drawn portrait of your pets for just $45. Now, out of this $45, $24.50 or about half, will be donated to the shelters. Now, $10 will also be a small token fee to thank our wonderful artists, and the remaining will cover courier fees and other costs. Please don't miss this chance to score yourself a beautiful, unique keepsake. Now, for all the fitness fanatics out there, right, nowadays there's circuit breaker, you don't know what to do at home, how do you keep yourself ripped for the gram? All right, if you're desperately missing your sessions at the Pilates studio, we have the perfect opportunity for you to get a great workout while also helping animals in need. Sounds wonderful. Now, the fabulous Marissa from Pratik Body Works, once again, that's Pratik Body Works, is conducting a charity Pilates on 
Sunday 31st May. That's right, a charity class on Sunday 31st May. Today, what time is it? It's going to be at 2 to 3 p.m. right after this live session. Now, all you need to do to take part in this is make a minimum donation of $10, though, of course, you are very welcome to contribute much more. Now, all proceeds will be going to the Project Adopt Lives partnered shelters and wonderful welfare groups as well. Now, if you've never tried Pilates before, this, of course, is a perfect opportunity for you to do so. Pilates is suitable for all ages, body types, and fitness levels. So it doesn't matter if you are 17 or 70, just grab a mat and please come and join us. Once again, there is a QR code on screen for you to register. Now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are absolutely thrilled to have all of these wonderful sponsors on board and couldn't be more grateful for your generosity. So let's give them a round of applause. And of course, if you have your camera on and your screen on, you can just give them a few hearts over there. Just make them a little bit happy. See the hearts and the big wows flying across the screen. Be really, really cool. Just give them a little bit of support. Now, it is time to our main event. After thanking all these wonderful sponsors, we have two very, very iconic personalities with us on this beautiful Sunday afternoon who are both going to bring us not one, not two, but three and four. Four of their lovely cats and their lovely stories about their furry felines. I can't wait. I am going to introduce the first one right now. Now, for those of you who are watching from Singapore, you probably know her from the hit local television series, Lion Mums, in which she has played a single mum, Min Yi, for three seasons. She's not just a talented actress. She's also an experienced host and writer as well. In real life, she's mum to four cats. And in the animal welfare scene in Singapore, she is known as a passionate advocate for animals. She's also the former vice president of the Cat Welfare Society. Please give a warm welcome to Vanessa van der Stratton. Hi. Hi, Vanessa. How are you over there? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, you look great. It's wonderful to see you. And of course, thank you so much for joining us on this beautiful afternoon with all our animal fans on Hope for Animals. Thank you. Now, Vanessa is not going to be alone here with us. She is going to be joined by our next guest. This next person I'm very excited to introduce. She is really a Singapore sports icon. Now, she has a slew of firsts to her name. This next guest was the first local female swimmer to qualify for the Paralympic Games when she raced in Athens in 2004 and was Singapore's first swimming world champion. Wow. Bring home gold in 2006. She also clinched a bronze medal at the 2016 Paralympic Games in Rio and proudly represented Singapore internationally for 20 years before retiring last year. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls at home, please give a round of applause for threes ago. Hello. Hi. Hi. Lisa, thank you so much for joining us here on this beautiful afternoon. I'm sure all our animal fans at home can't wait to talk to both you and Vanessa right now. <laughs> now, of course, uh, you know, as you know now, it's COVID-19. We are all staying at home through the circuit breaker. The question I have for both of you, starting with Vanessa, is mm -hmm. how are you coping with your cats right now at home, you know, for the past two months, has there been any difference between, you know, your cat seeing you now every day as opposed to uh, what it was before? How's it like for you, Vanessa? I, I think they can't wait to get rid of me. <laughs> they can't they, get rid? Yeah, they can't wait for me to like leave them alone during their afternoon naps. Uh, <laughs> they cannot wait for COVID-19 to be over. Like seriously, I think they are the ones who are going to be finding the cure. <laughs> Why do you think they can't wait? I mean, why do you think that they can't uh, wait to get rid of you? Are they like, you know, showing any uh, signs, change in behavior or anything like that? N nothing major, but I just feel like I'm annoying them more than usual. Because, you know, sometimes you're, you're stuck at, you know, this period of time when you are stuck at home, you, you tend to go and annoy them. And I don't know what it is, but a uh, sleeping cat, I just need to sort of bury wake my face. <laughs> yeah, you know, bury my face in their tummy and then tease them and wake them up and carry them and squeeze them and they just can't like stop it mom get away from me yeah so 
<laughs> very oh, relatable. I, I think a lot of cat owners would do that. Do you, like, Teresa? Very relatable, yes. <laughs> what about you, Teresa? How are you? Uh, are, are your cats uh, reacting to you? Are they, you know, feeling overstimulated like what Vanessa said? Or, you know, are they just loving every moment of your presence in the house? <laughs> yeah, they're not loving every pre- every moment. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, and I think the same, la, like, because we are at home so much and... I like to, like, a sleeping cat just has something about it. <laughs> they just, you know, usually yeah. they don't, you, you already have to wait for them to come to you. So, like, when they are, like, sleeping, you can kind of, like, <laughs> show them a little bit more affection just because they are not running away from you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wow. It, I don't know whether that, that means we, we might need to sort that out about ourselves. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, but, like, I, yeah. but I, I guess that's the difference between, like, cat owners and dog owners as well. We, we like to work for our affection. Ah. Yeah. If, if affection is given too freely and too easily, like a lot of dog owners, right? Their dogs are like so happy to see you and always yeah. always giving you so much love and attention. It's like, for me as a human being, it's like, okay, yeah, can you chill? Yeah. No need. <laughs> but with a cat, then it's the, the power dynamic has reversed. And yeah. you're like, love me. God damn it. Love me. <laughs> Man, that reminds me of that song, the love me, love me, say <laughs> that you love me, the cardigans, yeah. you know, for those of you guys yeah. who grew up in the 90s. That is a song that was written by a cat owner. Really? It was. It was. cats. I okay. Probably. Very, I very did not know that. I, I'm going to have to Google uh, later on just to verify that particular fact when it's a fact check, you know, hashtag fact, fact check. check. Yeah. Hey, so you know what? You know, you guys were talking about you no know, cats and dogs. Here is a question I have for you guys. Is there such a thing? You know, I'm just curious. Is there such a thing between the difference between a cat person and a dog person? Would you guys consider yourselves cat people? I mean, why do you uh, uh, keep four cats instead of dogs or something else? For example, starting with Teresa, what do you think? Um, I, I, I do believe there is some um characteristic to a dog and cat person like difference i i i think it doesn't apply to everybody of course lah. and but um generally i do think you can tell a cat and a dog person apart um yeah um what was the second question how to tell the face uh? <laughs> <laughs> it's written it's so written yeah yeah you're the face uh, you see the yeah. face the, the face yeah, but, yeah. Here got scratch, uh, means this cat person. <laughs> hey, you know what, by the way, uh, I can actually do a cat face. Do you, do you believe I can do a cat face? No, seriously. Do it. Do it. I want to see, this, it. Right? See, 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 see. I'm going to come a bit closer to the camera. Okay, I'm going to cover. It's like a magic trick. <laughs> oh my god. That is really not bad. Yes. yes. I would I would adopt you. Yeah, face yeah, of that's, my uh, nightmares. So, uh, I'm probably a, a cat cat, uh, cat person more than a dog person, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Might be, might be, might be. Yeah. Um, but why I got cats, I think it started from um, earlier when we first got our, we got our first cat lah. Um, I can't even remember which year, it was, it was so long ago when, uh, like this, her paw print of her, oh, of her paw print. wow. Yeah. So like, um, I, 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 she was our very first cat, she was uh, not very affectionate to everybody, only to us, you know, like she loved us a lot, we also loved her. And I think like, it, that really sparked, like for us, uh, a, as a cat family. <laughs> um, wow. And then we got like the first one, we got the second one. And once you get the second one, I think the third and the fourth don't really make that much of a difference. Right? Yeah. Right? <laughs> no. <laughs> so it's like, you, pop, you can't stop. It's like Pringles, you know, you just start. Exactly. Yeah. Like, like Pringles, like tattoos and like cats. Yes. I know. All of it. The tattoos oh, especially, yeah. you know, once you start, <laughs> zang, you get addicted. Oh, yeah. hey, I want to know some more. Then after the new thing, you know, your whole body, yeah? your, your, your face, you know, you're wearing like it a happened. whole... It happens. Real, it it happens. Real, it's yeah. true. It's true. Once you stop, you, I mean, once you start, you can't stop. What about you, Vanessa? Was there any uh, interesting story about your first cat love, that first cat that you uh, adopted and fell in love with? Um, well, I think my, my family has always been very, um, well, my, my dad in particular, he's always been a bit of a Dr. Doolittle. Um, mm. We used to have birds and fishes and, and my dad just has this amazing way with animals. The birds would sit in his palm to bathe in the shower and in, in the HDB flat toilet, you know, and he would sit, they would, they would sit in his palm. He would have these uh, discus fish when I was little oh. and he could stick his hand mm. in, the, in the tank and they would just swim up to graze him slightly. I mean, th- these are fish. Yeah, so he has, he has a gift. And since I was young, I was always around um, cats. And the bad news is that I am allergic 
to cats. I break out in rashes. I get the runny eyes and the the red eye, uh, the runny nose and the red eyes and all that stuff. Um, but it wasn't until I was in university, like ten years ago. Oh my god, ten years ago was university. <laughs> um, it wasn't until ten years ago when I got Bugger. He was my first cat. He is my first cat. My oldest boy. And uh, he was a stray kitten that I found downstairs in the rain. It was it was like a movie scene, you know. It was like the stars aligned, and I think Theresa, this is the same as well. Like it it has to align for you to get a cat. You know yeah. what I mean? It, yeah. And the cat has to choose you. It's yeah. not it's not you choosing the cat the other way around. Yeah. Um, it was a rainy night. He was in this like little cardboard box. He was so sad, and he was by himself. And I think he was <laughs> lost. Um, he must have been about two three months old. And me being the complete noob that I was, I started um, giving him milk. Not what? knowing, yeah, not knowing at the time that cats usually once they've weaned themselves off their mama's milk, they are lactose intolerant. I gave ah. him diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> I gave him diarrhea, but that sweet little boy, he accompanied me every night for a month while I was studying at the uh, study corners in the Void Deck area. And he, he would come out every night and he had these worst like the, the worst smelling farts you can imagine <laughs> and he he was on the table with me and my laptop and he would just lie there and his paw would like gently just touch my hand nothing nothing too overt nothing too yeah. affectionate but just enough to know that okay i'm here and you're there and that's all right and then we called him burger because he was a smelly burger and like always <laughs> farting and diarrhea and everything and i would run to the grass patch with the cat <laughs> And it was a month later, I finally took him home and he was, he was my star. He was everything. And he won me an iPad, actually from Pet Lover Center because I wow. entered a lucky draw. And so, yes, thank you, Pet Lover Center for that. Yeah. That was 10 years ago. He lucky good, bugger. <laughs> right? Yeah. Black cats, man. Who says they're not lucky? Black cats are lucky indeed. You know what? I think I need to get a cat as well and uh, try and take part in some lucky draws because I never won a lucky draw in my life. Ever, that was the ever. one and only one, you know. One and only one you yeah. won. Yeah. I don't even have one, but you got one. <laughs> so you, you beat me. It's 1-0. Okay, 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 okay. So, you know, uh, tell us more about your cat, uh, Theresa. I believe uh, you have four. Can you tell us more about your lovely furry pals at home? So, I have four, Seb, the oldest. Patches is the second, uh, Lobster is the third, and Nyx is the fourth. So, um, because there's four of us at home, they kind of like, in a way, each cat belongs to one of us. Um, so, Seb was, uh, Seb, Seb, Seb is more like my dad's cat, because last time he would like to um, take walks with my dad. So, my dad would go to the door, and then he would just run, and he'd just sit there and wait for my dad. Um, and then they go down and take a little stroll and he doesn't run so he just like walks along in front of my dad then once my dad has said it's enough he will carry him and then they'll come back up no you know? yeah it's so cute and then um Sweet. yeah Patches is like my mom's cat because she's like her shadow uh <sighs> she, like every everywhere if you want to look for my mom look for Patches <laughs> <laughs> Ah. Uh, yeah, she's everywhere. She's always following my mom. Uh, but she's super sweet. A uh, little bit jealous. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a very uh, so sweet. Yeah, possessive, you know. Um, but very sweet cat. Um, lobster is mine. So lobster was fostered by my friends. Um, so they, they have experience fostering a lot of kittens. And uh, at home, they have like five or six. Uh, and, and I think one day they had this... Uh, I think they rescued this four, three or four cat kittens from a, a not very good foster, mm -hmm. and um, I think some of lobster siblings passed away um, oh. during the whole ordeal. Right. So it wasn't it really it were in really bad condition lah. Um, so we got him when he was like really small, like mm -hmm. um, and and all their cats have uh, food names. So, which is why he's lobster, I guess. <laughs> why is he called lobster, though? What's the reason? Um, is he's orange. <laughs> ah! Yeah, um, prawn, like, prawn doesn't sound very regal. Like. Yeah, prawn, prawn is like, prawn, shrimp. come here, prawn, come here. They'll call you a shrimp. <laughs> yeah, he probably wouldn't yeah. like that. But um, they have like other cats like uh, walnut and uh, goma, you know, which is uh, Japanese for sesame. Yeah, so I mean, it just follows the team, mm. lah. Um, nice. And then Nyx is uh, the latest one we, we, we adopted from Cat Welfare. She's super sweet, super soft. Uh, she, she took a while to trust us, to be honest. Because uh, she was very um, timid uh, when we got oh. her. So she was hiding a lot, you know. Um, mm. But 
now she's just a super giving, affectionate, loving cat. All our cats are really, really great, lah. To be honest, someone's I, talking to you. Yeah, I know they want to get exactly. out of the room. Yeah. that's a, that's a showbiz cat uh, down there. You know, so like Teresa, I want to be <laughs> in front of the camera. I want I want to talk to everybody. I want to talk to that's, the whole world. That's Patches. She that's wants Patches. to get out of my room. Yeah. <laughs> she is trapped. Too bad. Too what bad. color is Patches? Is it brown Patches or, She's or what? She's like white and with uh, brown Patches. Yeah. Yeah. So Sep is black and white. Uh, Lobster is orange. And Nyx is full black with like a white chest. <sighs> Oh, that's cool. Really cute, He's yeah. got like a white white choker, you know? Yeah, no, just like, like a, a white chest, chest hair. Oh, white chest. So <laughs> white chest hair. Mm. Chest hair. Very regal. <laughs> yeah, but they're all really lovely. La. I, I, I think we got really lucky with our cats. Um, and and sometimes they do, they, it takes a while for them to like get you and like mm. trust you, you know? But once they do, like it's really, really uh, rewarding. You know? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's so sweet, you know. I just really love all these cat stories. And what about you? You know, uh, one thing that we, our two guests are today, for those who are watching at home, that have the comments I said <laughs> earlier, they both have four cats each. You know, they are like a perfect match when it comes to cats. Honestly, yeah, we're so, the same person. Yeah, Basically. you're the same person. Yeah. you know, just born at a different time or date, but both in <laughs> Singapore, lah. Yeah, la. Okay. What about you, Vanessa? How did you become a mum of? four cats, four felines. Well, Baga was very organic, right? Um, Bella was actually, she was picked up by my brother um, and she was, she was tiny. She was, she was only like, like that much, teeny tiny. Um, and initially he picked her up because he saw that she had a bit of a wound on her paw. So he thought, okay, why don't I just take her home and, and uh, you know, maybe get her to the vet, maybe get her seen too and things like that. And then when he brought her to me, I was kind of like, I was kind of shocked and I was kind of stunned. Like, you, sh you shouldn't have moved this kitten. You know, mom could be nearby. You should have like stayed and watched, you know, in case mom would have come for the kitten and you might have just inadvertently separated them. Um, so, you know, what, what was done was done. We got Bella checked out. Mm. And initially, Bella was not supposed to stay. Uh, there was an adopter who was a very young girl and she took Bella and then she came back in like three hours saying that her mom was really upset and she couldn't do it. So, you know, that all, all of this sort of uh, fed into the reason why I volunteered and why I would like to raise awareness because, you know, Theresa, you can back me up. This is a family affair. Nobody in the family can can be disapproving or yeah. can, can, you know, who doesn't feel strongly for a cat or who doesn't agree with the decision because so many things can go wrong from there. Mm. Um, it's also the reason why I believe cat welfare has uh, certain age restrictions in place for adopters. Yeah, uh, yeah so all of that just you know, all, all these experiences that I've had personally have fed into why I started to volunteer. Um, so yeah, that was Bug and Bella. So Bella stayed. And uh, <laughs> recently, these two, these other two that I have, Squid and Dog, um, they, they were, in, I know, thanks. They were in a complete accident. I saw two cats, Bree and Sotong, who were in my neighborhood. They both didn't have tipped ears and they were both very, very scared. Um, so I thought, okay, these cats could be, chances are they have been abandoned. Chances are they have, if, they've, if they're not abandoned, then the second slightly better scenario is that they're lost. So I took them in and I wanted to get them sterilized. Little did I know, Brie was already pregnant. Oh. She gave birth <laughs> in my home and uh, to three cats, cow, <laughs> a cow, cow, squid and dog. <laughs> Yes, I named them according to Are you to trying to give color. them like identity <laughs> crisis? <laughs> I think I might have, you know, to be honest. Um, yeah, so suddenly my, my two cat household became seven. And thankfully, uh, after after the kittens got a bit big, uh, we managed to find adopters for Sotong and Kao. And Brie was released back into the community. Brie was not doing well. Um, she was wounding herself and she just couldn't bring herself to trust me. Mm. Even now, when I see her downstairs, when I feed her, she, I can't come within petting range of her. I can't touch her. She, mm. it's, she's just been scarred la. somewhere, yeah. somehow someone bullied her and mm. she can't really psychologically get over it. So when she was with me, she was stress wounding herself. And now that she's back in the community, even though I'm sad to see her go, she's, she's fine. She's healthy, you know, <laughs> and, and 
she's not stressed out by me anymore. It's a, it's I guess. a lesson, isn't it? Of like sometimes you just gotta let go. Yeah, you just you just have to you know yeah. realize that you you can't do everything and you you yeah. can't make this cat change. So yeah, yeah. so Bree is back in the community. Uh, Sotong and Cow have wonderful adopters uh, who love them so much. I get to see updates all the time, and uh, Squid and Dog are still with me. <laughs> Foster fail. Yeah, foster <laughs> that's the official term for it. It's called foster. Yeah, I'll saying that I I have not fostered any cats, uh, kittens because I'm pretty sure all of them would be foster fails. To be honest, <laughs> like they would all be still in my house, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, what what you say about family having to buy in? It's completely true. Like, um, I I can't imagine how much tension there would be also, you know, mm. um, having to, like, always um, convince your family member that, that this is another, like, part of your family, you know, that they deserve to stay. And uh, our, our whole family, are cat, they are all, we're all cat people, you know. We, um, I think we're more on the extreme, like, just adopt any cat. Like, just, okay, we'll get this, <laughs> we'll take this, we'll take this, you know. <laughs> Like, uh, but you gotta. I go to supermarket like that. Uh, you just buy <laughs> put everything in the cart. Put everything in the cart. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's it's uh, also a huge responsibility for sure. Like, which the 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 minimum age requirement is so necessary because otherwise you get like kids just um oh I want yeah. a cat you know without really knowing the consequences or responsibilities yeah. yeah and and you know with with all these kids who who want cats and who want to adopt and I I think they're wonderful that shows you have mm. so much kindness and compassion and empathy but if your family is not ready or if your parents think you're too young just a, a, a word of advice you you don't have to adopt right now you know, you, you can wait. Don't worry. The right cat <laughs> will present itself at the right time. Believe me. Exactly. Um, you have so many other opportunities to to give back to the animals mm. in your environment. Um, you can always uh, volunteer with your animal welfare groups. You can also help the cat aunties. You know those cat aunties? You've seen them. You know who they are. You can always go and make friends. And uh, maybe you can even uh, help sponsor a little bit of your pocket money. Nothing too crazy. You're still in <laughs> school. You still need money. Okay. But you can always help sponsor their feeding and, and caring for the stray cats and the uh the community cats in your yeah. environment so there are a lot of don't ways worry to prepare yeah. your yeah. life yeah. to being a cat owner yeah. yes so many ways in the meantime <laughs> read up <laughs> yes don't yeah. give your future cats diarrhea like i did <laughs> That's right it's true i mean if you see a, a stray or whatever you know don't just adopt just because you see one i like what you said you know the same thing i i tell my single friends the same thing you know don't just uh, adopt whichever you see in the street and bring home <laughs> the right one will come along <laughs> at the right time don't mm -hmm. kanchong. my kanchong in singapore they say don't kanchong spider but you know how much do your cats uh, mean to you you know our tweezer i know that you are uh, really a medal winning swimming champion i can imagine how hard it is uh, to actually to be training because you know when you are a uh, champion when you are an athlete you need to constantly train and train and train in order to be top of your game right when you compete in all these international sports meets so how much do your cats mean to you and how do you juggle your four cats in the midst of this busy schedule i mean there's training there's probably uh, lots of publicity work as well and many other things i'm sure you're involved in how do you juggle your schedule mm, it's not too difficult i think with cats because they don't like my cats especially don't really require that much attention um, they if they do want attention, they come to me. But like, they usually don't lah. They just kind of a uh, a form of emotional support. I think it's it's nice, like when when you're feeling particularly stressed out, like being being able to like stroke a, a really fluffy uh, <sighs> creature is is something that is uh, I'm really lucky to be able to like to do. You know because they're all so tame and, and gentle and pretty loving most times, you know, but like um they, they provide the, that <clears throat> that form of emotional support that sometimes you need lah. But um yeah I mean nothing too major. <laughs> Is it hard? I mean, uh, what I always wonder is that you know a lot of people like to say that uh, cats yeah. are, are, are low maintenance mm -hmm. animals. Has there been a time that you had to be you know freezer for your training mm -hmm. and all that? Was there a time they had been away for your cats for quite a while, and you know how did they uh, 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 cope with all of that? Was there like some difference? Um. So the main people. Okay. So the person who feeds them is my mom. Mm. 
So her absence probably means more to them than my absence. <laughs> um, yeah, but I, I I do miss them when I'm away. So I, I um, take pictures with me, like not phone or what. Um, they they don't really behave too differently. The only thing is when you come home, they have uh, like a quality ch- quality check. Like, you know, your, your luggage needs to be checked. Your, yes, uh, right. Everything has to be checked, man. Like you go through feline security. If yeah. it passes, then you're good. <laughs> so, have any yeah. weird, 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 weird perfume or any strange bugs here? Or not? <laughs> uh, no, no, they'll check if you've been cheating on them. Yeah. Yes. Like, have you been, they you know, know with, yeah. Have they you been know. out with the strays? You know, have you been <laughs> with the strays in the street? Like, what's going on? What's going on? You know, talk to me. Yeah. Vanessa, I'm very interested to hear about your experience with the seven cats you had. How long did you do that? And how do you cope? I mean, what is it like? You know, I don't think uh, most of us in this world probably would never ever have a chance to have seven cats in the house at the same time. How do you cope with seven at one go? There, uh, there were days where it felt like all I was doing was feeding them and <laughs> scooping poop. Wow. Yeah. Thankfully, I have the support of my family. Um, so, so we take turns and there are days when my, my stepmom really pitches in to, to help me out uh, caring for the cats and, you know... Thankfully, it's 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 not that much different. I think the only thing is that there's more food going out and there's more poop coming out as well. Um, for me, they are kind of low maintenance. The worst part for about having all these cats is just the cleaning up. You know, mm. there's a lot of fur. Um, for someone who's very sensitive uh, to, to fur and, and things like that and someone who's allergic, right, like me, um, I have to do a lot of vacuuming. Yes. So, you know, that, that's, that's one little sacrifice. But I think it's so worth it. Because, you know, as you said, Theresa, when they, when they give you support, when they come to you, yeah. there is nothing more peaceful to me. There is nothing that makes me feel better than a cat purring. Mm, yeah. That Lovely. purr, that vibration is like, all is well with yes. the world. You know what I mean? It's, it's almost mm. like, yeah, you, you yeah. try not to squeeze your cat too hard, but there is, <laughs> there is that, that calming it's vibration. Yeah. Yeah, you know. Like, um, 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 <laughs> exactly. um, um. And you reach Nirvana after a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right yeah. with the cat. Yeah, so I that, that was challenging, la, but I, and I'm, I was quite glad to to find homes for Sotong and for Kao. And I'm, I'm very happy that they are with excellent owners. I, I visited Sotong, I think, a year after he was ad- mm. after he was officially adopted out. And he couldn't remember me. He was, he was He was a bit nervous around me. He was like, I'm not, I don't, <laughs> you know, like, so he started backpedal all <laughs> And Cats are not known for their memory. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but on you know that that in in some ways it did make me a little bit sad. But I think a bit a bigger part of me was really really happy because that mm. meant that he had fully accepted his new owner. That was his new mm. family now, and and he had moved on, and he was happy, and and yeah. So that that makes me happy. Yeah, mm. that's wonderful. I've got some more questions for you guys, okay. but I want to jump in to give our viewers a chance to chat with you. Okay, we have. Uh, some comments and questions from our viewers. Okay, first of all, we have a question from uh, Shermaine that says, okay. Vanessa, yes. was it easy going through the birth of your cat and was it heart aching when you had to give up the kittens? Uh, it was, okay, the birth part was handled um, all by Brie. It was, a, it, she, she was such a trooper and she did it so silently and I had no idea until I looked in and I discovered there were three small heads there. I was like, oh my God, what is that? And then I realized they were kittens. I was like, oh my God, she just gave birth. I need to, I need to fix this, you know? I need to figure out how can I, how can I make her comfortable? How can I make sure she's getting nourishment and things like that? But overall, I think cats are very independent that way. So she, she completely took care of them. She breastfed them. She uh, cared for them. She licked them up. She cleaned them. And I didn't even have to train them to use the litter box. They were, she was a good, she was a good mama, you know. And and they had their stuff sorted from the beginning. She was so, a good mama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was she was wonderful. Um, it was sad. It was sad giving them away. I think with my very first foster, his name was Bolt. He was a black mm-hmm. cat, and he had the best luck. He found a family super quickly. And Bolt, Bolt was was I I am convinced like half Siamese, like a lot of talking with a bit of a sore throat as well. So every meow came out like, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> it was really quite funny. So but cute. when I gave him to his family, um, I, I I cried. Yeah. 
Oh. I cried. I went. Yeah. I went back. I went into the car, mm. and then I was like, "Oh my god, I give away my cat!" You know, like I've cared for this cat. Is he gonna be okay? Yeah. But after after the theatrics, after all the tears and everything, you get to the point where you know what? I did the right thing. I couldn't. I can't sustain this, and I can't care for the next cat, and I can't care for my cats properly if I'm gonna hold on too tight. You know, yeah. I'm gonna hold on to every last one. Um, which is not to say, which is not to say that foster fails are in any way bad. So don't worry, Teresa. You keep going, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you and your family keep going. Uh, but yeah. for, for me personally, it wasn't. It, it was not going to be good luck to to hold on. So it was sad, but it was for a good cause. So it's been bittersweet. I think the thing about, about fosterers is that they. I, I feel like you guys have such heart and yeah. like. Um, like it takes a special person to be able to foster and and foster successfully mm. continuously. You know, yeah. like it's it's always sad to see a a a, a cat or a kitten go to a new home. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's always gonna be sad. You know, it's not it's not gonna go away. But like it's it's the it's the desire to continuously make sure that they find good homes and uh you will continue to do so lah, which I think is really pretty remarkable lah. Yeah, I think yeah, the rescues are very, very amazing people. Yeah, it is, it is, and you know we've been uh, talking about uh, cats and rescuing and everything and fostering for the past half hour. <laughs> Our viewers are asking a very, very big question. You know what that question is? They're asking, "Where are the cats? <laughs> we want to see the cats. Can you please bring the cats on screen now?" You know? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, will the cats be coming on the screen? And here's another question okay. that they ask, uh, Theresa and Vanessa. How do you hold the cat to make sure it's comfortable? We've got some cat lovers who want to see. <laughs> and they want to know whether, you know, how is it done? I don't know whether you guys would, you know, be able to demonstrate I, that. Uh, I don't think it's like a one hold for every cat. Like, yeah. you know, you have to kind of find that sweet spot for each cat, don't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, um, like, if you find a way for, for my cat to be happy, yeah, so. <laughs> yeah let me know. Because... I might be doing it wrong myself. <laughs> Maybe yeah, that's like... why they don't like being carried. <laughs> <laughs> they, they generally, buy the armpits, yeah. support the bum. Generally. Yes. Yeah, yeah, generally. That's what yeah. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Some cats, some okay. of them, like some of my cats like to be held like a, a like a hal- koala. Like like that, yeah. 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 But some some don't mind being upside down. Right. Oh. Yeah. Like Seb and Nix are okay upside down, but like like lobster can't really go upside down. He right. he will like panic and like freak out. Right, right. I can't do yeah. the fireman lift because yeah. my cats will start to dig in their claws. Yeah. And then I mean like putting them on your shoulders. Yeah, no, yeah, no. yeah. If, if I carry them like that and then oh. their face their face faces the other way, they sort of dig in their claws and then they climb down my back. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I love to see, I love watching cat videos and some of the crazy things that uh cats do. You know, some of the cats that I love watching uh, on uh, the video is Maru. I don't know where you know. Oh, Maru, yes. Maru the cat. Pusik. Have you all seen Pusik? No. Oh my goodness. Pusik is this really smart tuxedo cat and he's so clever. He can actually jump and climb onto his uh, owner's shoulders and just sit there, you know, all day. Really cute. Check out this uh, Pusik and Maru for viewers at home if you haven't. Now, Theresa. Here's a question from uh, one of our viewers uh, from Camellia. I hope I'm pronouncing that correct. From Camellia, it says, Theresa, how do you handle making sure all your four cats get along? Mm, okay, I think this one takes a bit of a uh, mixture of time and chemistry. Um, so our very first cat after after the, the Abby, uh, my, my very first, our very first cat was Abby. Before, uh, after she passed away, we got set. So mm. Seb was the is the like the big brother of the family right now, um and he's super chill and very um, it, like nothing bothers him. So he's he, we got we got we also got lucky with that because he's super easy to kind of uh mix with any other cat. Um, so when we got patches, it was just um, it's easier to get kittens to get along with older cats, right? Yeah, yeah. But older cats tend to have a bigger bigger problem. Mm. Um, but because Seb is so chill. We had an easier time. Um, not to say it's like super smooth, but like we, we just took time to make sure that they um get comfortable. Mm. We uh put them in separate rooms first. Um if they especially if they show signs of like aggression or like hissing, right? I think that's a sign of like let's take it a step back. Yeah. Um or like we make sure that they, they so they get 
gradually closer and closer and then they eat next to each other mm. um, so they can associate like food with the cat that they are the new cat that they're seeing um, and I think the next couple of ones because we got Fletcher's as a kitten lobster as a kitten Nyx was a bit older like a year old um, but but it was not not too not too bad to be honest like it was just uh, making sure you take step by step like, you don't like just throw the new cat to the, the group <laughs> and, like <Yeah>. accept this <laughs> new <laughs> member <laughs> like it's not so easy uh. and, and I think um, we had we had one cat uh, black cat after, uh, when was it I think it was the third one before lobster it was Kuro so he was an all black cat and we are almost convinced that he was a pretty short hair mix like he's so like his face is just yeah, the very, round the round round yeah, face it's so cute Woo. and and the way he, he lies down is like all split and flat <laughs> like it's so cute and he he plays fetch with tissue paper no, 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 no. <laughs> like a dog but uh but this this kuro could not for the life of us could not get along with sap like he was screaming bloody murder every time Mm. Um and Seth was just like, Oh my god, what what why are you what are you screaming? <laughs> <It's> demon. <laughs> yeah, and then we tried la, but it was just quite stressful for everybody and like Kuro was not happy. Mm. Um so we, we gave him away. He's really happy now. He's like the master of the house with two other dogs. Uh ah. who look who also kind of look like him. <laughs> yeah, so, so it's, it's a it's a happy family, la. yeah. It's great. Yeah, I know. It must be, not be easy to get all the cats to get along. You know, cats yeah. all have different personalities. I don't have any cats at home, but I always visit this lovely group of cats near my place at a particular block. There are four of them there. There is one that looks like he's got tiger stripes. Uh -huh. He's got another one that's got grey stripes. So he looks like this very, very nice grey fur rug. And there's a calico, right, which is the uh, uh -huh. black, orange, and uh, white. Yeah. And of course, there's a black cat as well. So they're all different. You know, the uh, the one that doesn't let me touch him at all is a grey striped one. You know, every time I try to touch him, he will run away, run away, run away, <laughs> run away. You know, and then we have the tiger striped one. The tiger striped one is so funny. He's always itching. And I always see him, you know, he will use his two front paws and he'll put them on the ground. And then he'll kick his uh, two back paws up and he'll use the two front paws to drag, drag, drag himself <laughs> along the ground. For some reason, he's always, oh. always... I always catch him doing that almost every time I see it him. Is he, he's seated when he does that, right? He's seated when he does yeah, that. Yeah, he's scratching yeah. his butt. Oh yeah, I know, I know. It's like he, all, almost all the time yeah. he's doing that. Then, you know what? The funny thing is when I see him and I go there and see him, I'm yeah. like... <laughs> Don't embarrass I'm not doing, him. Come I'm not doing on. anything. Let it's a cat, private let moment. Let stretch his butt, man. Yeah. And then, of course, you have the uh, very, very... Uh, the Kiliko cat. Kiliko cats are usually female, for those of you who don't yeah. know, uh, at home. So the Kiliko cat is always the one that's like, you know... <laughs> It's like, wow, really? Yeah, they've no, got like, style, right? Ah, like model. So, you know, I'm just uh, curious, you know, by the way, Vanessa, we have a shout out from uh, one of our fans, uh, Jackie, I believe is a mummy fan, says, Vanessa, my daughter likes your candid honesty. She's following you on Instagram via oh. mummy's account to see the cute cat. So, Vanessa, do you have any, yeah. like, uh, diva cat experiences? Any of your cats are, you know, really the diva of the house or any interesting personalities? Bella, Bella is definitely the, the diva. She is, um, she, she, she's my baby girl. Uh, she's nine. This, earlier this year, we had a bit of a scare with her. She swallowed a piece of plastic. It got stuck in her, just at the start of her upper intestine. She had to get surgery. It cost me a boatload of money. Um, but what, what really broke my heart was that she lost weight during this whole thing and she was at the vet and she was watered. And uh, it was it was just really scary la, to see her there, you know, in, in that cage and, and looking so helpless. But thankfully, she's made a full recovery. Mm -hmm. She can, we knew she was getting better when she had enough strength to fight back. She did not <laughs> like her medication. She did not like the syringe feeding. She hated all of it. She would spit out the pills. Yeah, it, it was like fighting war, you know, and like pry the mouth open, put in the pills. Uh, <laughs> so once she started being able to fight, yeah, she's like, oh yeah, she's fine. She's going to be fine. Um, but she is definitely, definitely the diva. I totally hear you, Theresa, with like trying to get four cats to get along. <laughs> Bugger is a lot like your Seb. He is so 
chill. He's he's very happy with with new cats in the house. He's very welcoming. Um, but Bella is not. Bella does not get along with Squid and Dog. I unfortunately have to keep them separate. But I'm doing exactly what you did. So I'm trying to associate them with food. Yeah. So I'm trying to trick Bella, and she's she's too damn smart la, for her own good. But um, I'm trying to convince her that when she sees the other cats, she shouldn't get angry because food is coming her way. You know, so I'm trying to con- condition that slowly. How the how's the progress been? It's gonna be slow, I think. <laughs> it's gonna be slow. She's very unwilling to give up her her reigning title as queen of the house. But um, hopefully, lah, hopefully, fingers crossed. Yeah, that's so funny. That's just like human beings, you know. Because sometimes you know, yeah. I would throw a party and uh, invite everyone, and sometimes two people that have no absolutely uh, no fondness for each other, don't like each other, will appear there because it's full food and drink. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they appear there. Yeah, yeah. Them, people who drink their beer, like, I don't like you, uh, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. okay. So we'll just continue to mutually ignore each other, but we won't fight. Yes. Yeah. yeah. As long That's as there's beer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, uh, Theresa, we have another question from a viewer uh, called Ning Chen. By the way, thank you to all our viewers yeah. out there who are... You know, continue, please, giving your comments and, of course, uh, typing your questions. We'd love to answer them. So, uh, Theresa... Ning Chen would like to know more about your favorite cat. She asked, who's your favorite cat and why? Okay, so Ning Chen is the one who fostered lobster. <laughs> so she wants to know that lobster is, her, is your favorite Lo- cat? Lobster <laughs> is my favorite cat. <laughs> I'm not just saying that because she's say that dumb. so loudly, you know, like later they, the rest of the cats can hear. They, they, they know it. They know <laughs> it. <laughs> they don't care, la, let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> but lobster, lobster is like got a, a very special place in my heart, lah. He's uh, he's is it? Patches is still dying to go out, but <laughs> uh, lobster is just kind of um, my boy. Like he he he's very vocal, so like he would talk back. And mm. I think when when sometimes you just go out, like I remember when he was super super small, um. In, even when he was being fostered, like he was is non-stop like talking. Um, very talkative, but very also very affectionate. And he's he's like I, I like to say he's like a Jack Russell of cats, like because oh. he's so energetic and he used to be a terror, like he his energy was just through the roof and always uh you can't really pet him last time. He would like grab your hand and just start kicking, you know, that that move. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It's it's and he used to do that a lot. So we we weren't very um weren't really able to really just uh pet him calmly. <laughs> but he's toned down a lot, you know, and uh af- especially after he got uh sterilized. Mm. Um mm. and and he used to have really big balls. <laughs> ah, okay. I feel like that contributed to his like uh testosterone. Yeah. So yeah. now he has got smaller balls but <laughs> but because it was so big right it's still quite big la. <laughs> talking about cat balls <laughs> that's <laughs> but, a great way to spend a sunday afternoon i don't want to talk about cat balls <laughs> that, that you need you need a whole another episode for that <laughs> talking about cat balls specifically but you know our viewers are asking once again Teresa and vanessa where are the cats can we see them anyone I'm trying <laughs> Let me see where they are. The older two are probably asleep in the kitchen. Um, let me see. I'm, I'm going to move you guys, okay? Oh my goodness, Teresa. Okay, let me see. Let me see. Where's... Woo! And this one, the name is? This is? Yeah. Sebastian. Seth. Sebastian. Sebastian yeah. He's actually named after Sebastian Vettel. Oh, oh the yeah. race car driver. This Formula is One. Not is, he very, is, it, is it because he's very fast? No, no yes. he's not. Now, here's I, the this? That, oh. this is Bella. Hi Bella. Hi Bella. Bella Ella. This is on top of the fridge where <laughs> she is. Oh, look, look, look. Ella Ella Bobella. <laughs> Her back foot. <laughs> back foot is already up. This is warning you. Warning get you. away yeah. from me. I may have stepped all over your boobs when I woke you up this morning, <laughs> but you are being currently too affectionate, and I do not like it. <laughs> yes, that's so that's Bella. Cute. Um, cute. Let me find Bugger. My my big black lump is here. Oh my! Oh my gosh! gosh. Yeah. That, that yeah. tummy. <laughs> this tummy. This, this jiggle, jiggle. Big, big oh tummy. My. Yeah. So Bugger is is the sweetest boy. He's the most malleable. You can you can do anything you want to him. You can grab his face. Yeah. You can. <laughs> he is so chill, and uh, he he weighs a lot. He's about eight kg. 
Yeah. I got oh. I got a black cat too with me. Yay! Look at that, Baga. Say hi. Say hi. Look. Hi. Okay, Baga, that's Nyx. Okay, he's coming. Look at that. <laughs> you guys look alike. Yeah, yeah look, look at that. Look, face. Face like almost alike. <laughs> are you looking at now, Baga? Why? Oh, can you hear me? I can. It's so cute. It's so soft. Yeah. So yeah. those are the older two. I think the younger two might be sleeping right now, so yeah, I won't go I and bother get, them. <laughs> I can't get some of like I can't get lobster because it's like behind the screen. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Theresa, there's a question yes. from uh, uh Ning again. She says <laughs> Ning go right. <laughs> just says Ning over here. Oh. Uh, which of your cats do you think uh most resembles you? Wow. Interesting question. Is there one? Um, I I like to say Seb because I think I'm pretty chill. Mm. Um, I'm not that I'm not that like lobster, not too much like lobster. Um, well, so Seb is like I, the cool I, cat. I, I I need like time to think about this. <laughs> no worries. But, but I think more like more like Seb lah. I think um uh I I I need my own space sometimes. Mm. Um, but I'm pretty sure with everyone, yeah. We all are. You know, there's somebody else that's very interested in your cat's uh, uh Teresa. Mm. She asks, Mindy says, Do you have fan art of your cat? Fan, I do. In fact, not do you really both fan have? Art, no. Not really fan art, but like, um, I don't even know where it is. It's somewhere outside on the wall. Um, mm. this, this uh, woman drew a portrait, a picture of me with three of them. Um, and and it, it, like Nick wasn't with us at the time, so we didn't have Nick in the picture. <laughs> yeah, it's but, okay. Put it a black like, like ink splotch. We want to. We good. want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh, we have one giant picture like just of Seb. Oh. Um, mm. my my dad's friend drew a really realistic picture of him. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yes. I would. Uh, can I move you guys to show you? I'm not yeah. sure. About sure, sure. 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 Yeah, let's let's try, try it. it. Let's try it. Let's see. Let's see. This is the uh, official tour of uh, wow. Tigo's lovely, lovely house, house. with see a the lovely, giant lovely cat, cat. Head at your bed. Yeah, look at it. There's cats then, everywhere. Oh, cat curtain. Where is Seb's uh, portrait? Okay. Seb's portrait. Seb's portrait. Can you see that? Oh, wow. Right. Oh. Oh, that is awesome. Wow. Nice. And then the other, the other painting is this one. Okay. Oh. No. Nice oh, one. I love that. Oh, oh my nice right. goodness. That is. And you awesome. see, like, uh, lobster is a tiny, tiny kitten there. Oh my gosh! Who did set. this? This uh, oh lady. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's so beautiful. Wow. wow I want to like, commission wow, one of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, I need to find, a, yeah. find it. Yeah. I would love yeah. a, a painting like that. And I'll hang it in my living room, man. Yeah, my it's goodness. in my living room. Yeah. And then you have like yeah. my very first cat, Abby. Oh. Yeah. Lovely portrait. Yeah, she's beautiful. Yeah. And oh, that's, that's, that's all I have. <laughs> I'm, I think the viewers at home must be so happy to be able to see all of these little, little bits of uh, cat paranophilia. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Just, I, I mean, this is just a treat for all the cat lovers at home watching wherever you may be. Now, I have a question, of course, uh, right now for Vanessa. I know Vanessa mm. used to be the former vice president of the Cat Welfare Society, and I'm sure a lot of people at home are probably uh, interested to join or find out what CWS does. Can you tell us? What is your most, uh, or should I say, how and why? How and why did you begin working with the uh, Cat Welfare Society? That's the first question. The second question is, what was your most fond memory or meaningful memory of your time there? Right. Um, well, I joined uh, Cat Welfare Society because I was going through a bit of a quarter life crisis. Uh, I was, I was, it starts always with a selfish reason, right? And, and for me at the time, I was wondering, okay, how how do I leave my mark on the world? What am I going to be known for when I'm no longer around? And, and, you know, how do I contribute and how can I make my stay on planet earth meaningful? And, you know, what's my value? Da, 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 da. So I was going through all of that. 
And uh, my boyfriend at the time was like, well, why don't you just volunteer, right? You, you like animals. Just go and do something. Go and do something with your time. Give back. And I was like, that was a really clever idea, but I'm not going to tell you that right now because if not, you're going to you know, <laughs> feel too powerful. But anyway, I did. I did. So I, I wrote in and I said, hey, you know, this is, um, this is what I do and I would like to, to help and please let me know how I can help. And I noticed that their yeah, Instagram at the time wasn't very strong. And because I was on Instagram a lot uh, for, for, you know, acting and you have to build your profile and yeah, da, 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 um, I thought, okay, since I'm already going to be on Instagram, why don't I help these guys out? So I put together a little program for them, and I, when I was running the Instagram page, we had uh, three posts every week about the cats who are up for adoption, and um, any events. I, I helped coordinate the the distributing of the material online, like you know those those little banners and posters. Um, I, I was in touch with a few graphic designers. I was in touch with a few fosterers, so I could always um, um, put together what had to be posted and I had like little reminders in my phone about when to be on Instagram when to post it every Sunday night I would sit down I write everything out and send it to myself in an email so when I'm outside I can just copy and paste like I thought this stuff through okay wow <laughs> I did it for like a couple of years um and it was a lot of fun I actually had a lot of fun and the best part I think you know as a uh, part of the overall experience was hearing from the fosterers that the mm. post the instagram post or the facebook post actually got someone's attention and that cat was adopted that was that mm. was the best part it's like yes yes social media for a good <laughs> cause you know with for the positive influence out there and actually you know feeling good about the, the help that I was helping to to you know create in the world so that was that was probably one of my best experiences Wow, sounds like a beautiful story. I think everyone <laughs> at home, after hearing that, you know, just like quickly, you know, go to the uh, Cat Welfare Society website <laughs> and sign up now. In fact, some, it's something I, I wanted to do for the longest time. I don't yeah. know why, what took me so long, but uh, I probably will definitely do it, you know, this year, if not this month. It will all know? happen in the right time. I think mm. timing is, you know, as That's I get true. older, you know, you always see that time, it, it falls just when you need it. And if you try to put it to, if you try to rush it or you try to delay it, it, it won't work out. It will happen to you exactly when you need it. And mm. I think with volunteering, um, for for a word of advice to the people out there, is help in the way that you can help in, you know, if you are not a graphic designer, don't start to be a graphic designer. <laughs> don't worry. Don't need to kill yourself, okay? If you are like an MC like Wayne or if you are always on social media like me, help mm. in the way that you can um so that's right yeah that that's how you can volunteer that's how you can give back use your specific skill set and it won't feel like you know too much is falling down on you yeah i think you're absolutely right it reminds me of a quote from uh nelson mandela for those of you who know who's yeah. nelson mandela if uh, anyone at home doesn't know who's nelson mandela it's time for a little bit of education go to uh, google <laughs> nelson mandela said that you know the best thing that we can do is just bring our gift to the world right mm -hmm. can't force anything you're absolutely right you know, every one of us has a gift. You just bring that gift to the world. That's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Now, talking about bringing our gifts to the world, we have questions from Vivian Ho says, any tips for first-time cat owners? Theresa, starting with you, what is your golden tip or tips for the first-time cat owner? You know, I've been in love with cats. Now I want to own one. What's your advice? Um, I'd say go and definitely make sure you're prepared uh, physically, emotionally, mentally. Like, go and read up so you know what to expect. Um, physically, like, in the physical sense, you make sure you have all the stuff you need, like, little boxes, uh, um, check out what kind of food. Uh, and sometimes even the kind of food you check doesn't yeah. work out because they don't like it, then you have to go and try again. <laughs> um, it's, it's just kind of uh, adapting to the situation, but making sure mm -hmm. you're prepared, lah. Uh. Mm. Um, check out which is are the vets near you. Check mm. out, um, I mean, there's all these preparations like the the meshing of your homes, uh, making sure the cat is protected from from yeah. the outside. You know, um, and and I think there's, uh, generally two types of cats: the the bush dwellers and the tree tree yeah. dwellers. Yeah. So oh. some of yeah. them like to stay on the ground. Some of them like to climb real high. Um, and you gotta figure out that personality for the for for, for mm. yourselves, you know. So then, when it comes down to it, if you find out there are tree dwellers, you're gonna get a cat tree, lah, you know. Yeah. Um. Or like you build like platforms so they can climb higher, stuff like that. I think, um, it's 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 not 
always the same lah. You know, I, I will say uh, not all, all not all my cats are the same. They're all different in their own ways. Uh, sometimes you realize that like Sep, um, he when when they being fed, they're fed at the same time, right? But then Sep always only drinks the water. Mm. And then he leaves the food, which is so strange. And then some other cat will come and eat his food, and then he has no food. <laughs> and so it's like you have to like you know all these things is just kind of like um knowing your children are very 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 much so um knowing their quirks, knowing, knowing what they are uh, when they poop, if they're not pooping, if they're not peeing, you know all these kind of things. And yeah. because we have four cats, right? You got a lot of litter boxes. <laughs> Cause, cause cats don't like to like they're very clean like like they're mm. very clean they groom themselves all the time and they also don't like when the litter box is full yeah <laughs> so so you gotta make sure you got enough litter boxes uh they they what they encourage one per cat or they do I think um one for every cat and then one extra but I'm yes. I'm yeah. I'm very lazy that way and so so this yeah. is this is please, please <laughs> don't, don't, don't listen don't to me <laughs> <laughs> but but I have two because Baga and Bella. Um, have always been sharing and dog and squid have always been sharing so they're okay yeah we um, only have two also yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and and they're fine like it really you gotta find the balance la. so if yeah. your cats don't 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 always don't obviously just uh listen to us and get two only but <laughs> um but you know you gotta figure it out and uh, for us because they are pretty okay and we clean the litter box very regularly so mm-hmm. Um, it works. It works out as long as you keep it clean and and happy, a clean and happy home, lah. It's always a great yeah. thing to have. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, that's it's, wonderful. It's like what you said, right? Like children. Um, I think for first time cat owners, it's it's prepare your nest for the mm. baby. Yeah. So when the baby gets there, there is no time for anything. Exactly. Uh, yeah, the baby right. gets there. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, oh and yeah. it also really depends on what age the baby is when it gets mm. there, right? Yeah. If you are having mm. kittens, please, for the love of God, hide get all toys. your breakables. <laughs> get, get toys. Get toys. Get toys. Uh, <laughs> I hope that you don't have a leather sofa because oh man, you know we had one. We had one when we had Abby. How long did it and... last? Oh wow. <laughs> We we yeah. honestly at one point were like it's either a cat or a sofa. Yeah, exactly. It can't and, have nice things. Yeah. I have cats. You know. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so definitely it's it's like it's a lot like baby proofing. It's a lot like getting ready for a baby entering your family. Mm. Um if the baby is older, like you know, five and above, you get yeah. away with a lot more because yes. they're chill. Yeah. They they know all they want to do is sort of like eat and like sleep that. and find a little corner and that's it. But if you have kittens, really um I, I Yeah, hope you gotta make sure you are like you're like ready to play all the yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. so much energy. Uh, yeah. Not to mention I, all the financial part of it, <laughs> you know, yeah. and the yeah, the time and everything. Yeah, and I think also the like, because when you get them young, you kind of have things that you can prepare them with. So like mm. when they play, like they play fight with your hand, Mm-mm-mm. you can teach them not to not to like not your to hand fight. is not a toy. Yeah, yeah, you know, you don't associate hand with playing. Yes, so you use you use toys lah. I think that's a one one good tip for. Mm. first time cat owners uh, mm. make sure they know the difference between your hand and a toy <laughs> yeah. yeah I was talking about that cat the Pusik the one I mentioned right which yeah. has got millions and millions of views on uh, uh, YouTube the owner crazy you know he likes to use the hand as a toy he loves it so huh? every day you put a hand there and then the cat will just jump on him bite the hand kick the hand claw the hand and then the whole hand will bleed you know I seriously mean, seriously if, if that's his thing yeah. then okay that's his, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah I was like amazed and it's like wow by the way, Theresa, you know, um, yeah. you were talking about how you actually uh, made some preparations for the cats in your home. I know that you have some very, very interesting catifications. That is like a word that combines two uh, words, you know, cat and modification, <laughs> catifications, right? I, did I just coin I like that? It, okay. I, like it. <laughs> I think I better patent that maybe. I'm just kidding. Catifications to your home. Can you tell us, you know, uh, about that? I think we've got some pictures somewhere that maybe we'll be streaming live uh, from our production studio, but... Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about the catification of your home? How did you do it? Why did you do it? And uh, would you recommend it for other owners? I would because I, I think it makes my cats happier. Um, we have this like cat wall. So the moment you enter my home, it's, it's right in front of you. Like it's a, it used to be a giant like empty wall. Um, so we got some, my parents got some like uh, cat wall supply stuff um, from Taobao. And... Uh, they set it up themselves because there was I think it didn't even come with like any instructions or cal- calculations and stuff like that Um, so they had to calculate and then like is the bridge too far is the bridge too near how high 
how how much distance apart, you know that kind of stuff. Um, so it's a, a couple of hours of drilling and measuring, and both my parents are engineers, so I think mm. they they put their engineer brains into <laughs> work, you know. And uh, is, is are they showing the are they showing the pictures? I believe they should be. They yeah. should be. So they like I be. think yeah, it, it looked out. It turned out really well. It was it's so nice. It's such a good like feature. Mm -hmm home feature you know uh and and i think like cats know that this is their home <laughs> yeah <laughs> it I, belongs I feel to like them I've, I've seen pictures of this on um pinterest yeah yeah so i'm really jealous yeah. of your your catification I better not show my cats don't yeah, let them don't get any that. ideas <laughs> <laughs> but like other things are like i i mean um i i we mesh the windows all the windows are meshed uh especially if we want to leave the windows open mm. um the the gate is mesh like it has, uh, comes with mesh anyway like mm. it, it, there's no hole for the cats to run out so we can leave the door open you know um and i think for us we we are very strong believers in not letting the cats roam you know uh that's there's, there's just so much I, I feel unknown out there yeah. uh you can't control who the cat sees or runs into and it's a it's a very irres irresponsible thing like i think yes to let mm. your cat roam outside it is not an outdoor cat it's not an outdoor cat yeah i mean you can say yeah i mean you can see your cats want to go out but that doesn't mean you let them go i'm, I'm very lucky my my for all four of my cats are really? cowards the <laughs> giant cowards yeah i can leave the front door open and nobody oh, no. goes anywhere but i completely agree with you i think it's very irresponsible to let your cats roam um mm. you know civic mindedly you don't want to mm. cause nuisance you don't want to be a nuisance to your neighbors right mm -hmm. that's number one number two is exactly as you said why would you let your toddler out into the world <laughs> you know with with no guidance and you you don't know if, yeah. if they're gonna run into a cycle if they're gonna yeah. run into traffic if you wouldn't do that to your child don't do that to your pet exactly i yeah. think that's the that's one of the biggest um things about how people mm. view pets don't you think yes. like it's like they don't view it anything more than property, which yeah. is the biggest issue. Like they, mm. which is the reason why you see uh, abandonment cases or abuse cases in a sense, you know, because they don't see the cats or dogs as or pets, you know, as mm. more than something they own. Yeah. Um, and I think when you apply it to you, if you see the pet as a part of your family, it's easier to understand why you would not let them do certain things mm -hmm. you wouldn't just cause your toddler yeah you know i mean if you open the door the toddler's gonna run out right yeah <laughs> doesn't mean doesn't mean you let the toddler run out right yeah and i <laughs> think a lot of people have that misconception that cats need to be free cats need to explore they really don't you know yeah. what they what they crave is stimulation yeah so if you're gonna keep your cats indoor and you should you should keep your cats indoor <laughs> then you need to catify your home like theresa yeah. has you know get your toys make sure that you have yeah. a stimulating environment so yeah. your cats are at home who still feel fulfilled and active mm -hmm. and things like that. Yeah. And I think people worry also, I think another big worry for people when they want to consider modification, catification, mm. um, is the aesthetics of the home. Yeah. But I think like, it's, it's a very, very small thing to kind of, uh, yeah. sacrifice. Like, I think my home still looks pretty good. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's just like, uh, another excuse like I think to, for, for them to just, uh, forego this thing that could potentially save their cat's life. Because, yeah. You see so many stories of like cats falling from high high ground or mm. a building, and um, many of the times it's because the the house is not meshed, um, not you know, and they the cats don't have that depth you know perception that they <laughs> they know if I jump it's gonna cause my like hurt or that that yeah. thing like they just can't tell that you know um, and I think that's the that's the your part lah as a responsible. Mm. Yeah. You know, I have another question over here from our viewers. Thank you so much, Teresa, for telling us so much about all of the uh, wonderful cat tips that you have and the advice for the cat owners. I got to tell you, we really, really benefited greatly from the advice from both our ladies. Mm -hmm. But uh, one of our viewers here is very uh, curious about uh, Vanessa's time at the uh, Cat Welfare Society. Now, they want to know about all the important work that goes on, you know, behind the scenes at the uh, Cat Welfare Society. Probably a lot of things that people uh, don't know. What does the CWS do exactly to help cats in terms of adoption, abandonment, or is there some big issue that, you know, uh, the CWS is helping to tackle that maybe uh, our viewers may not know about? Give us the inside story. 
Okay, um, Cat Welfare Society is uh, it's a non-profit charity organization. It's been around for a great many years. I believe they started in 1999. Um, and it's, all, it's I don't, okay, honestly, I don't know this from, from Adam. Um, I don't, I'm not too sure about this, but it doesn't run as a shelter or a rescue operation. It, it never has. The reason for that is because it's not sustainable because then you end up having to absorb all these cats and take care of these cats and then your costs keep going higher and higher. So instead, what Cat Welfare Society does is provide a network for support. Um, we provide uh, uh, fosterers and caregivers and rescuers with the means and, and the support on the ground so that they feel supported. So whenever there are food drives, for example, mm. these fosterers that are in touch with cat welfare, they will benefit from the donation drive. Um, cat Welfare Society also is, is a very outspoken advocate for animal rights issues, in particular cats, mm -hmm. of course, um, with the government. So one of their projects was trying to, and I, I believe we're still trying to do this, is to get cats legalized in HDB. Mm -hmm. Currently, a bit of a gray area, a bit of don't ask, don't mm -hmm. tell, hope your neighbors don't find out, hope you don't fight with your neighbors sort of situation. Um, but what we would like, um, if I could speak on behalf of CWS for a moment, is to um, legalize it and find a uh, find find legislation for it and in finding legislation we would then be able to penalize and enforce you know uh, action against irresponsible cat owners but without this legislation right now it's it's very tough la. it's very tough mm. to say that you know you are messing up don't do it again mm. uh you, you you better not mess up anymore if yeah. not it's just like you know it's just a slap on the wrist like whatever yeah now, now it's more like every cat owner is doing something wrong it's if sometimes you have a, yeah if you yeah. have a cat in a HDB like like I do, yeah. four of them, right. like you know, it's more like it's not even doesn't even matter whether you're responsible or not. By by yes. law, you're already doing something wrong. Which exactly, is, which is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. So I think the differentiation is then who is a responsible cat owner and who is not a responsible cat owner, and to be able to find that protection for the responsible ones and the enforcement for the irresponsible ones. Um, CWS also gets involved um, when there are rescue cases, hoarding cases. Um, we don't always have the funds, but we will always help in, in the ways that we can. Sometimes it's uh, raising awareness and things like that. But more often than not, there is uh, CWS stands for a network. Mm. It's an on-the-ground network. When you go to the CWS website, catwelfaresociety.org, you will see an <laughs> adoption board. <laughs> Still well-trained. Uh, adoption board where all the cats are put up for adoption. If you are currently fostering a cat, you can use that board too. Don't worry. Very simple. Um, you, there are also lots of resources there. If you need help trapping a cat, if you find a community cat, any question you can think of, it is on that website. So go and look for it. What CWS also aims to do is to educate the public. That's a big part of what they do um, because we want people to stop asking, hey, I found a stray cat. Can you come and take it? Like, stop asking us that, okay? The best person to help that cat is you. You are, you are in that best position. You, you, you are you, right you, there. Yeah. So let us teach you what to do. That, that's hopefully what Cat Welfare Society um, aims to do like, with the general public. Yeah. Now, here's a question that I want to follow up on that before okay. we go to our next uh, segment, which is talking about allergies. You know, that's one of the things I think a lot of our viewers are interested to hear about. But before that, you know, just bouncing off that topic, uh, Vanessa, mm -hmm. as experienced fosterers for both of you, uh, Therese and Vanessa, can you <laughs> share about the importance of fostering? Right. How does fostering help these animals exactly find homes? So how can we encourage uh, more of this and how does it help? Okay, um, let, let me just uh, take this first. The rescuers usually are the ones on the ground who will get, who receive the first word of a situation. Oh, it could be a cat is stuck in a drain. It could be they've just discovered a hoarding situation where there are 94 cats crammed inside a HDB house. Um, it, it could happen. So these are rescuers who are the first line of defense. They will go in and they will assess the situation. But the fosterers are needed because these cats after being rescued from the home or whichever environment they are found in they need a temporary place they need a temporary place where they can get cleaned up they can get medical attention they can maybe get fattened up and ready for adoption all of it 
um, before they find their forever home. So actually, fostering is a safe haven. It is. It gives the cat. Uh, enough time to get used to human beings. It gives the cat time to recover and become, you know, a bit more adoptable. You know, get healthier and more ready and emotionally mature and all that kind of stuff. Like children, lah. Okay, like children. So it, it allows uh, the 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 cat this sort of space and time. Um, at the same time, it frees up the rescuers so that they are not the ones who are going out to rescue and at home got one hundred. You know what I mean? So, wow. Yeah, so the fosterers provide this reprieve for uh, rescuers and they are the linchpin between the adopters and, and what's happening on the ground. So fostering is is a huge thing. And if you can't foster, don't worry, you can sponsor. Uh-huh. Ah. See, see, see? Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. What about you, Lisa? <laughs> what is your views on uh, fostering? I mean, I, I'm definitely on the same uh, wavelength. Like, I, I think all of us have different roles, right? And... Some of us can be fosterers. Like I said, I I feel like it takes a special breed of person to be able to foster successfully and regularly and consistently. You know, uh, I am not that person. <laughs> I would have probably if I could foster, I would have like fifty cats with me right now. <laughs> like, if, I know, right? I mean, I just don't have the space or financial capability to do that. Uh, and I think like we have uh, all different like parts of the community to play yeah. uh, some people just really can't adopt and then they, they have their, yeah. their roles you know they can sponsor they can volunteer they can uh, spread the word you know all these different roles um, but fosterers yeah I mean they, they are really all the fosterers uh, my friends who are fosterers they're all really selfless people really um, giving of their time and energy and money and usually they're they are, yeah I mean they're they are really truly amazing people like. Um, they and that's not necessary because you just there's just so many cases where you just need just need a, a clean safe home for the cat to to kind of stay for a while and um then proceed to go and find and even the process of finding a new home for the cat like it's such a tedious process like you got to yeah. make sure that you trust the person yeah. that you're giving you know you got to go and visit and make sure that the mm. house is yeah. cat ready cat proof mm-hmm. um and then even so like you you got to also still know like even you do all this prep and all this uh stuff right sometimes it just doesn't work out you know yeah. then I, you know and it's about it's, it's, and then you gotta start all over again it's just a it's, it's really tiring but it's very it seems very fulfilling and i think like cat fosterers are just uh, amazing uh, yeah just the most amazing human beings, you know, and talking about this yeah. now, I think one of you, uh, Vanessa, was, or was it Teresa, you're saying you're 50 cats, right? <laughs> oh, that would be my dream. You know, I want to retire. You know, there's this island in Japan, I believe yeah. they have like all oh, cats, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would love to retire there. Either that or I think in Japan, there's also another island, all bunnies. Have you seen that one? Yes. All the bunnies I start running to you? Yes. Yeah. You hold seems the, like, the, like a place You hold like on. the bunny food and all the bunnies are like, <laughs> And Japan I'm is thinking. like the place to be for animals, lah. Yeah, oh, with the, with, I just saw the video of the of the deer bowing. The, is it oh. the Nara deer or something oh. like that? Yeah, yeah. Wow. So you can go to Japan oh. and the deers bow. At yeah, oh. Oh. <laughs> so cute. I mean, that'll be my my dream. My dream come true. You know, all the bunnies or all just, the cats. You just want to be Snow White, lah, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. I used to have two bunnies, by the way. I didn't have cats. Uh, I used to have two bunnies. Uh, oh. One of them is the same uh, name as uh, your cat, uh, Theresa. I had a bunny called Patches, brown Ooh. and white. Yeah, and Peppermint, which was all white. So I had two bunnies before when I was uh, growing up as a child. So, yeah, those were my uh, uh, pet memories. Bunnies are also very uh, affectionate. Like I had, My cousin yeah. has a bunny. And she's so, like, they're so smart, you know? Uh uh, I think they're smart. Like I mean, of course, I, not I all of them smart, are smart. Wayne, you look surprised. <laughs> yeah, your face. <laughs> your, that? face your face doesn't show that they that you agree with my statement. <laughs> Is it oh, okay? Because I think I was looking down on my phone just one second because it was just uh, <laughs> buzzing with some uh, questions from our lovely viewers. But I, I, I yeah, I'm good. I'm okay. good. So are now, bunnies smart? You have to answer that. Are bunnies yeah. smart? Are bunnies smart? I think all animals are very, very intelligent, whether they uh, show it or smart. not. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that not. But I would say that bunnies, I can't really see them displaying that so-called intelligence. I guess because, you know, that they're, they're, they're not they're not as uh what do you call that um, agile or expressive as okay. a cat or okay. dog would be. They just stay there like <laughs> okay la, that also like got married, la, yeah. got married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, you yeah, take one carrot, they just they just like 
<laughs> and then at night you hear, you know, the water, the water will yeah. show things. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Yeah, like and then water, like yeah, yeah like bit, you know that that's what happens when you have a, a bunny. Yeah, 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 yeah. It really, it's not easy. Yeah, it's not easy to uh, uh, <laughs> care for them. But those are my uh, wonderful pet experiences. Now we're gonna go on to the uh, topic that has uh, been shared on Facebook, uh, on our Facebook uh, pages. Now, this is something that I think a lot of uh, viewers or people at home might be uh, curious or concerned or even uh, unsure about, mm-hmm. and that is, what if I have an allergy you know uh how do i manage having a cat or a pet with an allergy i understand that you know uh interestingly enough both you uh Theresa, as well as vanessa you both have allergies how do you guys manage that starting with Theresa, what does it mean to have an allergy and how do you manage it with a pet like a cat you just do <laughs> I mean, um, I, I, I had childhood asthma, so like there's uh, always like, you know, things like the carpet, la. Mm. Um, cats were not encouraged, of course, because their, their fur is really fine. Um, pets in general, because of the like that dander, you know. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I, I really can't give you like a proper answer, except like, if, like we love them too much to give them up, la, you know. Uh, and I think I, my allergies are not too severe mm. so i do get like maybe runny nose and and some itchy eyes and sometimes i get rashes mm. um but i i feel like even then it's not too severe like mm. i was still bear with it to be able to have them um and i also found that it depends on certain types of dander like like you know certain cats they have just a different kind of dander right. you know and, and it gets more it affects you more than than maybe uh, another cat another mm. breed you know um yeah I, I mean it's 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 about i know some people who also stock up on like their um allergy mats um so when they <laughs> when it gets bad you know they know to, to, they have some on on hand um yeah. yeah you just kind of manage it and uh vacuuming helps a lot like vanessa mm-hmm. you know um we have a robo cleaner so it's a like the little thing. The, the, the Roomba thing is yeah, that like Roomba. the most, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it, it make sure that the house is always um, as, as clean as possible, mm-hmm. as uh, furless mm. as possible, you know. Yeah. And with four cats, it really, it, it really is a lot. Lah. Yeah. Um, and if your cats shed a lot also, um, that, that plays a part. You, there's a lot of things you can do, lah, I think, in general, like vacuum often, make sure it's well ventilated. Mm. Um, brush your cats because I think that helps, you know. Yeah, it does. Yeah, brushing yeah. the cats, uh, especially with like long hair cat, it's sad. Like, we have to brush him in case he gets matted fur. Mm. Um, it's, 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 um, yeah, la, different, um, uh, things you can take responsibility for, la, and mm. make your experience less, uh, torturous. <laughs> <laughs> Is your cat right? The 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 uh, robot vacuum cleaner. Sometimes no, they're scared of it. They're scared. Go for a ride, like yo. This is my ride, yo. That's a false advertisement. You hate it. Yeah. That's the one cat in the world that is not afraid of it. Exactly. I hate all these cat videos. Sometimes they make me feel so bad about my cats. All I end up, so I can look at them and say, look at my cats. Like, what is wrong with you? Why are you like them? This cute. You you need to be this cute. You know. Yeah, but no, I, for me, I'm allergic as well. So I'm, I'm the same as Theresa. Like vacuuming helps a lot. Um, I have the antihistamines at all times. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, and whenever I think about my, my cats and being allergic to them, it's always like, you know, God has a sense of humor. La. The one thing <laughs> that I love is the one thing that I'm allergic to, that kind of stuff. Um, but actually, it's it's very manageable. Um, you know, you just it, it encourages a lot of hand washing. You know, after you touch your cats, don't touch your face, don't touch your eyes, don't touch your mouth. And it's, you know, isn't that what we're doing right now? Anyway, <laughs> that's what we're doing. We're washing our hands. So, exactly. yeah, so just just be smart about it. Um, and I think it's very manageable. Uh, I've heard of a lot of cases where ladies who, who get pregnant, um, their doctors, their, their gynecologists actually tell them to give up mm. their cats. Mm-hmm. And uh, I would just like to publicly say that this is not the case you don't have to give up your cats yeah there is a fear it's called toxoplasmosis um i've, I've done the reading up about it and i've asked both a vet and a gynecologist about it toxoplasmosis 
you can you can get it from sushi. You can get it from raw fish. <laughs> this is the reason why they tell pregnant ladies not to eat raw fish or uncooked food, uncooked yeah. meat. Um, so it is not true that your cat is going to cause this to to your pregnancy or to your baby or anything like that. Um, what you need to do is keep your cats indoors. Huh? Make <laughs> sure they're not infected, first of all. Second of all, after you clear the litter box, wash your hands. Wash your hands. Simple. If you, it's so simple. <laughs> if you really don't want to do that, then ask your husband to clear the litter box the whole exactly. time you are pregnant. So easy. So, that's so that's easy. really... Okay, so my sister was pregnant. Uh, how old is my niece? Uh, maybe a year ago. Mm. Um, nine, nine months in a year. Yeah, so like that was also a prob- uh, an issue that, that came up because right. they were worried, you know, um, and they have two cats at home. So I think um they were they were slightly worried for a bit, but then they also read up and then they realized that you know they had many things to manage it lah. So mm-hmm. my my brother in law did the cleaning of the the litter box, hey. you know, uh making sure that you know as much as possible she doesn't have to do it lah, you know. Yeah, uh, she's nice. growing a baby. Okay, she's growing a human I mean... being. Husbands, <laughs> step up. You can do it. <laughs> It's not that hard. Just hold your breath for a little while. It's like mining for gold, okay? It's wear wear a mask. Wear a mask. My dad, my dad wears a mask. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can do that too. Yeah. Fantastic stories. I'm sure our wonderful viewers are reassured after hearing all of it, how you guys actually managed to cope with your cats, with your furry pals, even with the allergies that you have. Now, this is a fantastic question that I have coming from one of our viewers. But before that, I want to shout out for one of our wonderful sponsors. Uh, it's coming to 2 p.m. in about uh, five, six minutes. And uh, Marissa from uh, Pratik Body Works, this is one of our sponsors, is conducting a charity Zoom Pilates class today. Wow. So for all you uh, fitness, you know, the, all the gym bunnies out there, it's from 2 to 3 p.m. You can uh, join. Please join us. And of course, uh, a minimum donation, by the way, of just $10. If you have more than that, you are welcome to donate even more. All right, and all these proceeds will go to our wonderful partnered animal shelters. Now, the session is suitable, of course, for beginners and intermediate levels as well. So just grab a mat and you will see a sign-up form, I believe, will be in the captions of this video that you're watching right now. And you no, know, we have this final question for both of you before we uh, say goodbye. This is a lovely question that I see from uh, our viewers, Ai Wei. Ai Wei says, What? Has having cats changed your life? Or how has having cats changed your life? Let me rephrase it. How oh. has having cats I changed your life? Yeah. Reza, you go first. Um, I think ch- having cats has just made me, I think it's made me more calm, to be honest. Uh, not many people know that I used to have really bad anger issues like I, I I was uh always angry and I think having cats definitely helped to calm me down a lot. Mm. Um mm. um they're just like you just learn from them la. <laughs> <laughs> um you learn to be independent, you learn to be uh like nonchalant about certain things, you know, things that don't matter really. You don't don't give don't give them the attention that they don't deserve. La. Um and I think they they're definitely I mean the the other things more more stereotypical things like um um like making sure that you don't give like a, a, too much attention you know and it, like this kind of stuff like um being a bit more like withdrawn a bit more like uh, toned down like in a sense like, I think being subtle about it sometimes I think I learn from my cats <laughs> um <laughs> being clean <laughs> being clean uh, taking a nap whenever you can a, oh my god the importance of a nap like right. I think that you the cats just teach teach that a lot like every every moment they can they nap um and then they they always still so like i i mean i would like a cat in my life man right no i want right. to be my cat like, oh no like, yes like a house specify cat. specify yeah, specify, yeah i want to yeah. be my cat yeah i mean they, they lead <laughs> such great lives and i think it's just um they provide a lot of joy you know they they play they they have fun if they they I mean they're just a joy la, in 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 my life and uh, I would encourage everybody to get pets for sure yeah definitely yeah. Yeah. get yeah. one like having to come home to like a pet like it's really yeah. something special yeah yeah I, I I feel the same way I think when you have a cat or when you have any pet really you feel so 
um, you, you become a parent in your own way. You know what I mean? And you're always thinking about your pet and you're mm. always hoping that your pet is, is happy, is healthy, is staying safe and all this kind of stuff. So it really does take you out of your own brain. And it does take you, it does make you minimize um, all the trivialities and the problems, like you said, right? Like if, it's, mm. if, you, if you don't have to give your attention to it, don't worry about it. Yeah. Having said that, I'm still very high strung. I'm still very <laughs> anxious. I'm still very edgy. So my cats don't really do anything about that. But it helps when I'm I'm so furious and I'm so angry and I have those same issues. Um, it helps knowing that they're around, that there's mm. something warm that you can cuddle. Yeah. There is something that you can annoy just by loving it, <laughs> you know. And it, it makes your day so much brighter. My cat, uh, Bella, has recently started taking to sleeping in the sink. <laughs> I have no idea why. But it makes me smile. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I know. I have no idea. Yeah. It's like suddenly, is it? Suddenly. Oh suddenly. Out of nowhere, she's sleeping in the sink. That is hilarious. <laughs> right, yeah. And then sometimes they contort themselves into positions. And, and my favorite, my favorite. Yeah. yeah they're just they're just weird, la, you know? And <laughs> and it's so it brings so much joy and laughter. Yeah. And yeah, so definitely if you if you don't own a pet right now, that's okay. But do consider it, you know, kids, if you're watching, when you grow up, consider having a pet. It changes everything. It's yeah. wonderful. Um, and for parents out there with kids who are bugging them, I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> but consider it too, because it brings a new level of joy having a furry four-legged member of your family. And it teaches them responsibility. Hell yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. We all, I think yeah. we all have like a, I mean, I had a, like a, like kind of a, a starting, like starter pet. Mm. You know, it, it's not with a terrapin. Yeah, uh, you graduate. <laughs> yeah, and then you have hamsters. And then you, you know, grow, grow, and then you have hamsters. Like, yeah, begin, begin, yeah, begin, exactly. begin, 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 begin. I couldn't yeah. do hamsters though. Why? I don't know. They just don't survive. Oh, no. Oh. Yeah, I think I'm just not meant for it. It's like, like house plants with me, you know, like hamsters just. Hamsters I, I can't I'm not quite like house plants. No, I know, I know, but they don't survive with me for some reason. <laughs> Yeah, That's so terrible. I'm gonna stick with the cats. Okay, yeah. Yes, At least yeah. now I don't give them diarrhea. I don't give them the trots. You know, they're okay. Yeah, you found the pet for you. <laughs> I found the one. <laughs> yes, and of course, I believe uh, when you talk about the one, you know, for many, many of our viewers out there, the one is waiting for you out there somewhere. A special pet. It could be a cat. It could be a dog. But a furry pal or maybe a non-furry pal yes. but there is probably a pet out there waiting for you to bring him or her or it into your life all right and of mm -hmm. course uh, adopting a pet i gotta say is a life-changing experience because you will be changing a life of that one little creature that one little animal and of course you never know that one animal could change your life as well and of course with that i'm so happy and thankful to be uh, this whole afternoon, one and a half hours with uh, two wonderful icons in Singapore. <laughs> we have uh, Theresa Go, our wonderful swimming champion, and of course, uh, Vanessa van der Straten, right, accomplished actress, which you can mm -hmm. see on the TV screens almost every other night. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and family at home, please, 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 if wherever you are, please give a round of applause for our two guests. Come on! Yay! Yay! Wonderful Singapore round of applause <laughs> for our lovely uh, two cat heroes, cat mums, whatever you want to call them. Thank you so much, ladies, for joining us. And of course, uh, we do hope to see you in future, maybe on another of our episodes. And of course, I want to thank you for being with us on this beautiful afternoon. Thank you so much, Theresa and Vanessa. Thank you. Thank you, Wayne. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Bye-bye. And to our viewers at home, you know, it's been so wonderful to have uh, Theresa and uh, Vanessa with us all throughout this afternoon. We hope you enjoy the show, right? Please uh, give a like, give a heart, give a comment, right? Give the, now they have the new care icon, right? Give lots and lots of that to our uh, video. And of course, you can share the video with our friends, uh, with your friends rather, at home or wherever you are, right? Please tell them more about what Hope for Animals is doing. Now, before we end the show, I'd like to leave you with a few words from the woman with the big dreams and an even bigger heart. She is going to be coming on screen and uh, she founded Hope for Animals and brought together all these wonderful people and organizations for Project Adopt Live. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Melody Tan. There she is. Hi, Melody. Hey. Hi, thanks so much for hosting this episode. It's really great to have you guys on board. Um, so earlier on, you actually did mention that this entire PAL initiative is a 
it is a combination of four four animals together with people from the arts and media industry and you know the MCs that are coming on board you guys have been doing such a fantastic job hosting every single episode and we are really glad to have you guys including uh, Vanessa and Teresa to actually come on board to share their stories on how it is like being a pet owner and managing their time while having a cat. Uh, so yeah, we are really glad to have that episode and we are actually seeing a lot of questions being asked and that was very good because it causes a lot of interactive uh, conversations. Um, so just wanted to do a last shout out that actually for our next episode, we are going to do on adoption. We are going to uh, work together closely with exclusively mongrels to have their dogs up for adoption. So we are really glad if everybody could actually follow up with our next episode. But if you are interested in cat adoption, we actually have two previous Sundays adoption on cats. I think that was something that Win thoroughly enjoyed, right? Because you, you, seem, you seem to actually like both cats and dogs. But today's episode, maybe you are leaning more towards cats. I love, I love all animals, you know, I can't get enough. I can tell you that, you know, I'm all over the animals. Like if I go to a person's house and they're having a party and people are getting drunk or, you know, trying to uh, flirt with each other, <laughs> I get one in the room, in the corner with the dog or the cat, you know, the cat and dog person will be like... Nah, nah, nah. Basically, what will happen is that during that party, everybody is like, where's Wade? And you're like, wait, yeah. let me look exactly. for the dog or the cat. <laughs> I will be the one who, who, who disappear. You know, I'm antisocial and I'll be actually talking uh, to the animals. That's what I'll be doing. That, that, that's just me. Right, right. Okay, so uh, um, anyway, uh, we just want to do a shout out because uh, right now also the Pilates are starting. Or uh, rather, they have You can still join them and then join them as well. So we are really glad to have everybody on board. And yeah, we look forward to having you guys for our next episode. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Melody, for that shout out. And of course, uh, just before I go, or just before we go, rather, I would like to say uh, to everyone, please join us next Sunday, same time, same place, when we'll feature some beautiful canine guests. So this is all for the doggy lovers. And they are from exclusively mongrels, and they'll be on the show, and we'll be interviewing Alyssa and Kay Shin. Oh, look at that. Melody, hi. <laughs> that is a very, very uh, cute looking dog over there. So we'll be interviewing Alyssa and Pei Shin, who have both adopted dogs from exclusively mongrels. Don't forget, adopt, don't shop. Every adoption saves two lives, that of the animal you give a home to and also the life of another animal that you make a space for in the shelter. So with that, it's my pleasure to say goodbye right now to all our wonderful viewers at home watching this episode of PAL PAL. And of course, I would like to say to you, stay happy, stay healthy, and remember, always be kind to animals. See you. Thank you. Bye. See you. Bye-bye.